Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're going over how to manually install cores on the Steam version of RetroArch. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, RetroArch on Steam is amazing, but it's also very limiting. At the time of filming, there are only 10 cores available on the Steam version. If you wanna add more, you have to do it manually, but that's why you're watching this video. For this video's example, I'm gonna go over PlayStation 2. Here's my Steam version of RetroArch booted up. You can see it found a PlayStation 2 game, but when I go to play PlayStation 2, well, there's no associated core with it and nothing here is going to work. To get more cores in the Steam version, you will have to download the standalone version of RetroArch. From there, you download the cores, manually transfer them over into the Steam version of RetroArch, and you should be good to go. So first up here, head to RetroArch.com and then click on Get RetroArch. From here, click on Download Stable. The download is about 164 megabytes. Next up, run the installer and install RetroArch on your system. I do recommend placing it in a folder that's easily accessible and somewhere you're going to remember because we're going to have to access it in just a minute. Next up, boot up the standalone version of RetroArch you just installed, not the Steam version. From here, go to Load Core. It should look something like this, or at least hopefully it does. If you've accidentally booted up the Steam version, just close out of it, manually find the standalone version of RetroArch that you just installed and boot that up. Next up from here, go to download a core. And from here, choose the system you want to download. For this video, I'm using PlayStation 2, PCSX2. So all I have to do is just click on this and let it download. And just for fun here, I'm going to download PPSSPP to show you two different systems. When the core is finished downloading, feel free to close out RetroArch and open up the folder that you installed the standalone version in. From here, open up the cores folder and we'll see the PCSX2 and PPSSPP cores that I just downloaded. These are the cores that we need to copy out into the Steam version of RetroArch. Next up, open up your Steam library, find RetroArch in there, right click on it, go to manage, and then click browse local files. From here, open up the cores folder for the Steam version of RetroArch. You should see all of the cores that Steam has installed. What you need to do is just copy these two files into this folder. To copy these files over, it's literally just a drag and drop and you're good to go. Next up, open up the Steam version of RetroArch, not the standalone version, and just double check that your cores are showing up. So if I take a look at the bottom here, I can see my PCSX2 core and my PPSSPP core, which is amazing. So from here, I'm just gonna launch a PSP game. And I have Street Fighter Alpha 3 ready to go. And I'm gonna go down here to set core association, make sure it selects PPSSPP, and then click run. And just like that, the game is up and running, which is amazing. PPSSP doesn't require any special BIOS files, it just kind of works. Some cores do require BIOS files like PS2. For example here, let's try a PS2 game. We'll try Street Fighter EX3. Go to set core association, make sure it's showing up as PCSX2. As soon as I hit run, RetroArch is probably gonna crash. Fixing this is pretty simple. A while back I did a video showing exactly how to do this, but I'll quickly go over it now. So just find RetroArch in your Steam library again, go to manage and then click browse local files. From here, navigate to where it says system, right click and create a new folder. Call this folder PCSX2. Make sure you spell it correctly. Next up, open up your browser, head on over to PCSX2.net. I'll leave a link in the description below and then download the PCSX2 Windows binary. It is a total of 6.2 megabytes. It's not very big. Once it's downloaded, open up the 7-zip archive. If you can't, I've got a tutorial on how to set up 7-zip and I'll leave it in the description below. And then extract all of these files here into that PCSX2 folder. From here, open up PCSX2. For language selector, you can leave it at system default here. Click next. In terms of configuration, I've addressed this. I'll leave it in the description below if you want to check it out. I'm just going to go to next here and make sure I've got my proper BIOS file. Now, if you don't quite know what a PS2 BIOS is, there are some very handy sites out there with a ton of information that tell you exactly what a PS2 BIOS actually is. When you have your BIOS file handy, open up the BIOS file in this PCSX2 folder and drop it in here. Then go back to PCSX2 and click refresh list. It should show up. Aside from this, you're pretty much done. Click finish and boot up RetroArch on Steam. And you can close this running version of PCSX2 as well. So back on the Steam version of RetroArch here, I'll go down to PlayStation 2, select Street Fighter EX3. Make sure the core is set correctly here. I want it as PCSX2. 
and then I'm going to click run and that should boot up the game. And just like that, Street Fighter EX3 is running great on PCSX2. So at the end of the day here, I showed you how to install something easy like PPSSPP and I showed you how to install something much more difficult like PCSX2. And that's about all I got for this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Hopefully you can use this information to install some more cores and try out some more different systems on the Steam version of RetroArch. Let me know your thoughts about the Steam version of RetroArch in the comments below. Have you tried it out yet? Is it on your radar or are you just too busy? Or do you like the standalone version? Because that's also an amazing version. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.